In this tutorial, I'm going to show you a really neat way to set up a simple camera orbit. So if you're ever showing off a three-dimensional object, you can do this much more effectively. And let me show you what I mean by that. So here we're just looking at the default cube. I'm going to go in and add a modifier. I'm going to do the wireframe modifier. Now let's render this. So I'll go up to render and say render image. And we're looking at a cube here. And here's sort of a classic problem. If we stare at this, our eyes might sort of keep inverting this object. For example, this vertex, is this in the back or the front? Likewise, is this vertex in the back or the front? And if we stare at this long enough, it'll go back and forth. And very often looking at three-dimensional things in a static figure, we lose that. But by adding an orbit to this, our minds can interpret the three-dimensionality much easier. And this is a great way to spice up your presentations and also make things a bit more understandable. So let's go ahead and delete that render window and get started. We're going to set up an orbit so that we can visualize this cube more easily. The first thing we're going to do is position the camera to be sort of the center view, and then we'll set up the orbit to go around that. So what I'm gonna do is click on this little left arrow here to open up this tool panel, and I'll click on the view. Now, when I click on this camera, what's going to happen? We're looking through the camera now, so we can adjust the position. And so we click this little checkbox here, camera view, and now when we hold down the middle mouse button, we orbit around, we're actually changing the position of the camera to a view that we like. And I kind of like about where we were, so I'm not going to change that very much. But if you want it different, set up your center view, and it's about this view that we will end up orbiting. So I will come out of this camera view. The next thing I'm going to do is create the path that the camera will follow. So I'm gonna go up to add, curve, circle. And the reason I wanna do a circle path, I want the camera to come back to the same point that it started so that I only have to render a few frames. I will probably do 200 frames and it will just repeat and you can let that animation repeat in your presentation so you can just keep talking. But what I want to do is I want to center this circle path around the camera and also set up the circle so that it's perpendicular to the line connecting the, the camera to the object. So first thing we'll do is we will center this circle where the camera is centered. There's a number of ways of doing that. The exact way is using snapping. That's something we'll do later, but we can just eyeball this. So what we can do is first click on Z and that's the top view. We could have also just pressed seven on the numpad. I'm gonna press the G key and that grabs the circle and I can move it so that the little dots right at the end of the camera. And don't be too paranoid about getting exact. Now we can go to a different view. And again, I will hit the G key and center that at the back of the camera. And now when we orbit, uh, what we see is that we have centered that circle around the camera. Now we wanna make this circle so that it's perpendicular to the line connecting the camera to the square because if it orbits here, it's essentially just gonna be moving closer and farther away. And that's not what we want. What we want is something more looks like this when, when it's viewed. So we need to make that circle perpendicular. So the way we can do that is we'll come around to the, the side view, right? And we'll get it almost straight on. Now we, we have our circle selected. We can click this orbit tool and just orbit until that's roughly perpendicular. And what we'll wanna do is we'll wanna switch between a few different views and that looks pretty good and just make sure that it's perpendicular. And that looks pretty good. Now, when the camera tracks this path and is orbiting around, uh, that will always be in a direction sort of facing that cube. So that's exactly what we want to do. Now, as the camera is orbiting, 
we want a point that we're tracking to and just clicking on this cube and say track to that well that's can be a large cube and you might have a much larger more complicated thing so we want to give it a specific point to track to so the way to do this is add empty and we really can choose anything here but i'll choose plain axes and it adds an object here it's empty it's not going to render but it is a thing that is there that our camera can track to so this empty will be what we track to on to the next step the next thing we want to do is snap our camera to this path and we want to do that exactly oh and by the way we could change the shape of that path i'm going to leave it a circle but you know feel free to go in and move the vertices around and, and change that path but we'll stick with that but we want to snap the camera to the path and so the way we'll do this is we'll select the circle we hit the tab key to go into edit mode or or we can go up here object edit mode and we see four vertices here forming the circle let's just pick one of them it doesn't matter which one and we're going to snap the camera to that so the way we're going to do this is first we're going to snap the 3d cursor to this vertex and then we'll go snap the camera to that 3d cursor so we have this vertex selected and now we can go up to curve snap and then cursor to selected now we've moved the 3d cursor to that vertex we can go back to object mode and now we can click on the camera and then we'll go up to object and then snap and we want to snap our selection to the cursor now our camera is right on a vertex on that circle and we can go on to our next step so we'll deselect everything at this point now we want to make this camera follow this path so the way we'll do this, we'll select the camera. We're gonna hold down the shift key and select the path. Now notice these are slightly different colors because we're going to parent this. So I'm going to press control P on the keyboard. That brings up the parenting and I wanna go down and select follow path. That is gonna make the camera follow this circle path. Now we also want to tell Blender where the camera is going to point. That's why we created the empty. So we're going to select the camera. Then we're going to go over here to these settings and add an object constraint. And the constraint we want to add is track two. And that's telling the camera where to point. And so the target will select this little drop down and say empty. So now, no matter what, that camera is going to keep pointing towards that empty. We also want to make sure this track axis and up, the track axis set to minus Z and the up set to Y. That's the default here, but if it was not, this is very important. And that's what keeps the, the camera oriented correctly and pointing up and all that. Uh, otherwise, it'll turn sideways and, and do crazy things. So we're done with that. Now what we want to do is set up the animation and we're, we have, I think the default in Blender, something like 24 frames per second. So roughly 25 frames is one second. And we have to think how long we want our orbit to last as we go all the way around. And so I'm going to pick eight seconds. So I'll make the total number of frames 200 instead of 250. But now what we have to do is we have to make this tracking last those full 200 frames. So what I'll do is I'll select the path. I will go over here. And we're going to go down to path animation, which is selected by default. And this will be how many frames we want this animation to last. I'm going to type in 201. The why the one extra? Because if I type in 200, then the first frame and the last frame will be identical and it's going to come across as a tiny glitch in the animation. And I don't want that. So 
we're going to set that to 201, even though our animation will only be 200 frames, but it makes the first and the last frame just as different as the first and the second, and then the second to the third. So it'll be a smooth animation. That really is it, and we can test this. We can click on the camera to look at this through the camera view, and then we can click play. And what we see is we have this nice, slow, classy orbiting. And when somebody is looking at this, it just turns on the 3D computer in their brain and boom, they got it. They understand the three dimensionality of that. So we would render a movie here and then we would import that into our presentation. And we would just let this slowly orbit as we're talking through it. And it's a very classy thing to do and it will really improve the effectiveness of your presentations. So I hope you found this helpful.